stewardship. I don't need no music, brother. I'm riding by myself tonight. Listen, he took, he took the responsibility that was entrusted. It's a trust. You understand how precious it is for God to take a piece of his kingdom and put it in your hands? Huh? You who perhaps never had nothing. That's right. Some of us never had much. Or some of us had jobs, took us off our jobs, and turned the kingdom into our hands. The kingdom, yes. Gave us the responsibility of people's lives and their future. Their children and their grandchildren. Ah, making sure that we give them the right kinds of things so that they can live a better kind of life and bring glory to God. That is a trust. That should not be violated. Should not be handled sloppily. Because you want to keep up with the boys and hang out with who is who. And I don't know who is who. See, because I don't even know. I don't have them folk I don't know. And I ain't looking to know. See? Because uh-huh. you think if you know them, you're somebody. What a deception. Because the thing is, they don't know you and don't want to know you. See, that's the problem right there. They see you, hi, Doc, hi, hi, hi. What that mean? They don't even know your middle name, don't even know your first name, don't even know where you live, and try to act like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know who you are. Lies, trash, and garbage. Don't know you and don't want to know you. It's a game. But when you realize that you may not have much, but you have a piece of the kingdom, it may not be big right now, but God in his wisdom, did you hear what I say? I said his wisdom. Come on and put your hands together for his wisdom. Come on and praise him for his wisdom. Oh, I feel a praise in here. I said it's his wisdom. Hallelujah. Gave you a peace. Gave you responsibility and expects accountability. Called in and he was no longer a steward. It didn't take long. No no long explanation. It's over. Listen to what the steward said. Now, you see, when you're a steward like that in a rich man's house, you live good. Because you have food, allowance. Follow me now, pastors. House, allowance. I, I can't go no further. So you better say amen. Can't go, can't go up in nobody's business, but you know where I'm going. Help me go there. Help me go there. See? In some organizations, there are packages. When you come to work for a church, you come and you get a package, administrator, all kinds of privileges. We no longer ask you to come in and not work without giving you comparative salary. Coverage for this and coverage for that. Because we realize that even though you're working for the church, you deserve to be taken care of. This man was taken care of. But the Bible said when he woke up and found out that he messed up. Why? Because he's going to miss the kind of lifestyle that he had. He was living good, ladies and gentlemen. He was blessed to be in the rich man's house. Didn't have to pay rent. Didn't have to buy food and had servants taking care of him. The boy was living good. And when he woke up and found out, I'm missing out on a good thing. I think I better try to get it back. He was a man of the world and he used manipulation and he used a devious plan, but it worked. He went to the man that owed his master money. And of course the master didn't know. The master didn't look at the books all the time. He said, well, what do you owe? A hundred, make it 50. What do you owe? So-and-so, make it four score. He cut the bill and had them to pay it right away and went back to the master and gave him some returns. For you see, that's what it's all about. God is expecting returns. He's expecting profitability. He's expecting increase. He gives it to you and tells you, work. Work it, work it, manage it, work it, manage it, work it, manage it, and give me increase. 
No, you know what we have told you? God is going to increase you. But without responsibility. Doesn't come easy. The Bible said, Jesus said now, I want you to look at this man. He made a resolve. He decided to fix it. Fix it. Fix it quick. Go home and do it immediately. Clean up the sloppiness right away. Stop the leak. There's a leak somewhere. Something is going on through the back door. Lock the back door. Lord, you help me tonight. Help me, help me. Put it so that nothing else slips out of your hand. Jesus, Lord, have mercy. Make sure that you're tightening up so that the profitability remains in the house. God wants to send some blessing, but he wants to make sure that when he puts it in there, it doesn't leak out. Go home and stop the leak. Stop it. Stop it. Call everybody in. Mama, auntie, uncle, whoever you got up in there. Everybody, everybody, everybody. There's a leak somewhere. He went home. He went, to, he went to the men and collected the money and returned it to the master. And the master said, look, he may have been a dishonest man, but he ain't no fool. He may have been a cheater, but he's not an idiot. He realized he was going to miss something that he could not get again. Where else could he go and have that kind of position? Where else could he go and have that kind of privilege? My God, some of us know that if, if, if we didn't have these positions and privileges, we wouldn't be anywhere. This has been the best times of our lives. Ah, God has been so good to some of us. Picked us up from nowhere and brought us into the kingdom and put us in the forefront of the kingdom. Where else could we go and have the kind of blessing? an opportunity and favor only in the kingdom of God and the devil is a liar I will not allow him uh, to steal what God has given me it is a blessing to be in the kingdom of God it is a blessing to be a servant of the most high God come on church put your hands together I want to hear you praise him it's a blessing it's a blessing now, the key now to success is faithfulness. We're not just talking about, we're not just talking about church, home, business, relationship. This is the key. Faithfulness. Fidelity. The dirty, work of, dirty word of America. Fidelity is a dirty word in America's vocabulary, even in the church. Why do you think people switch churches? Well, well, the Lord spoke to me. The Lord spoke to me. The Lord gave me a vision and quickened in my spirit. Quickened in my spirit. That my time is up at Evangel. And the Lord is sending me south. Get down south for three months. Got another quickening. My God, always quickening. Because it takes a certain kind of character to be faithful. I'm not talking about a certain kind of ministry. Because you can have a ministry and not be faithful. I'm not talking about a certain kind of anointing. Because you can be anointed and yet not be faithful. As a matter of fact. People who claim to be so spiritually high can be so sloppy in their daily duties and in their commitments. Come on, it seems like the more prophetic they are, the more strange they become. Ordinary things that other people can do, they're too anointed to do. Oh, come on here, ladies and gentlemen. It is not biblical. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. One of the fruit of the Spirit, or one of the pegs of the fruit of the Spirit, is faithfulness. One of the signs that I have the Holy Ghost. Did you hear what I said now? That's a whole nother sermon. Let me just cut it short. One of the signs that I have the Holy Ghost is that I have the ability to be faithful. Lord, have mercy. Even if I don't like what pastor is doing, I must be faithful. 
There should not be any comments, any body language, any reaction, any raising of the eyebrow, any twitching of the finger to make anybody think that I'm not with pastor. I don't care what's going on. I am faithful. Oh, come on. I want you to put your hands together for faithfulness. 